Today we are checking out the new Symphonisk bookshelf speaker. This is a partnership between Ikea and Sonos. Let's dive in. Hey everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider. And today we are going to be checking out, and I'm really excited about this one, the new Symphonisk speakers that are a partnership between Ikea and Sonos, bringing Sonos's legendary audio capabilities and the home furnishing and style and manufacturing of Ikea. It's really cool. We're gonna check out the bookshelf speaker today. We'll be reviewing the lamp as well, so check out that video independently. But today we're gonna to focus on that bookshelf speaker. Not only does it sound great, but it blends into your home seamlessly, whether it's actually on a shelf or mounted to the wall as a shelf. So we're gonna get through all that today, show you how to control it, use AirPlay 2, everything else you need to know about this really awesome new speaker. So as I said, we're gonna be checking out the Symphonisk bookshelf speaker. Here's the box, we're gonna go ahead and dive into this. Let's check it out. It comes in two different colors. You can see here we have the black model, but it also comes in a white version too. And if you do pick these up and you're looking at getting the mount for the wall, make sure you get the corresponding color to the mount. Those come in colors as well, and they include a silicone pad that goes on the top. So make sure you have the right mount that goes with the speaker you're gonna be getting. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and check it out. So this is everything you get. You get the speaker itself, and then you get a pair of cables. The cables are going to be pretty standard cables. There is an ethernet cable in case you want to hardwire this thing, nothing fancy here. And then the second cable is going to be your power cable, which actually is rather fancy. It is a nylon wrapped cable, so it looks quite a bit better. If you're going to be mounting this on the wall, or even just routing this around, it does look better than just your standard junky looking cable. Everything can be hidden along the back. As you can see, there are two different channels for this, one going down and one going to the side. That's because this works in either orientation, whether you have it actually standing up or you have it lying down. There are little rubber feet on either end to compensate for that. So whatever fits kind of your aesthetic, even just on a table vertically or horizontally and even mounted on the wall, it works in both directions. We don't have the actual touch capacitive controls that we see with the other Sonos speakers that are recent. There are actual physical buttons here, but they are pretty minimalistic, and honestly, we're gonna control this mostly with our voice or through the Sonos app anyway, that we really don't need to worry about the actual physical buttons on the speaker. Though you can play a pause and control the volume, and they're used for your first time setup. Overall, we are very happy with how this hardware looks. It does have a plastic body, but it has that nice matte finish and that heathered fabric along the front. Also looks great, fitting into a lot of different aesthetics, whether you're going for a more modern or more rustic. It is quite a bit bigger than the HomePod, depending on your setup, that may be too big, but it sounds almost as good. Setup is very easy and it's done through the Sonos app. Just press a few of the buttons and walk through the steps. It only took us a few minutes before we went and did the software update. Now this can be added as part of a surround set for a home theater system. We'll touch on that in a little bit, but right now we are going to set it up as a standalone device. But if you do have two of these, you can't mix and match with other Sonos speakers, it has to be two of the same ones, uh, you can use those as surround speakers for the Beam, Playbase, something else that you may have from Sonos in front of your TV. In this case, we're just gonna name it Living Room 3 and move on. After it is added and the software update is finished, you can do a few other steps, including tuning it with TruePlay. Use your phone, move around your room, and it'll tune it for its position. We'll skip that and wait till we actually have this in place before we go ahead and tune it. Now, since this does work with AirPlay 2, you can add it right into the home app. Tap on the plus button in the top right hand corner, add accessory, and say you don't have a code. As you can see, it already pops up in here. We have a second one already on the system. We're going to add Living Room 3 to our mix, and we're going to go ahead and give it a name that's a little bit more understanding than Living Room 3, and we'll also go ahead and assign it into a room. In this case, it is going to go in our living room, so we'll change that as well. By adding it to HomeKit, you get all the other features and benefits that HomeKit affords. So you can play and pause just using your voice, just ask Siri to play or pause the music on the IKEA speaker. You can send stuff to an entire room of which this speaker will be part of because it supports that multi-room audio in AirPlay 2. You can tell it to play, play a certain playlist or song, anything on a speaker or room, and this will respond. It can be built into HomeKit scenes, so maybe in the morning you want to play your wake up playlist, uh, something like that can all be tied together through automations and even Siri shortcuts. 
if we want to test it out, we can pull up Siri real quick and say, play some fun music on the IKEA speaker. And after just a second, it does think, because this was just set up a half a second ago, it'll automatically start playing some party music on that IKEA speaker right here to my left. Not only can you play the music, play pause, all of that, change tracks, you can change the volume too. So everything is very nice and you can access it with control center, same as all of your other AirPlay 2 speakers. So how does the audio actually sound? Well, we went through our normal testing regimen that we often do with new speakers and headphones and we were very impressed with this speaker. Now we're going to compare this kind of a little bit to HomePod because it is going to be an alternative even though this is way, way cheaper. You're immediately going to notice if you've tried any other Sonos products, this has that Sonos sound. It sounds very reminiscent of all the other Sonos speakers and fits into that ecosystem very well, which is probably good because if you picked up a cheap Sonos like this one here and a nice Sonos Play 1 or something and you played them together, it's going to be very mismatched. Here they sound like they go well together. There is definitely not nearly as much bass as with the HomePod and the HomePod probably sounds a little bit better than the Symphonisk bookshelf speaker but it adds a little bit more bass when we added it to the wall. So when we actually had this mounted versus sitting on our table, we had a little bit more bass and oomph to it, which really paid off when we were watching movies. Speaking of mounting it to the wall, that may be my favorite feature yet of the Symphonisk bookshelf speaker, because it can literally be used as a bookshelf. Mount goes on the wall, it easily attaches to the speaker, it is very secure, you don't really want to put water or lit candles on here, but you can put quite a few other things and it seems to hold a decent amount of weight. But anything small that's going to be nice next to your chair, little kind of valet, whatever it's going to be is perfect. Now we do have the Sonos Beam, which check out that review if you not because we do love the Sonos Beam, and you can use this by itself. But what's nice about the Sonos system is you can always add to it. So in this case you have the Beam and you need some more speakers. You need surround speakers to go with it, possibly even a subwoofer too. So with these, we mounted them in our living room, one on either side, and added them as remote surround speakers. So we now have wireless surround speakers to go with our beam on either end. And we don't have to have anything sitting on our tables, taking up space. It's very, very nice to have these mounted to the wall. We don't have to buy an expensive stand, or even some other expensive mounts that may or may not perfectly fit with these. So for an extra 20 bucks to add an amount to these, we definitely recommend it. In the end, with a simple, clean design and a sub-100 price tag and Sono sound, we absolutely love the new Symphonisk bookshelf speaker. So that is it. That is the new IKEA and Sonos Symphonisk bookshelf speaker. What do you guys think? If you want to pick one up, you can find them at IKEA. There's a link down below in the description. Let us know what you think in the comments or reach out to me personally on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.